Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look and see how we calculate the third quartile when we have a very large data set. So the data set we chose was a thousand points from one to a thousand. Turns out that the position of each data point is also equal to the value of each data point, which makes it easy to look at it. And notice that since there's an even number of data points, we have very nice lines where that represents the first quartile, the second quartile, the third quartile, and then of course we have the high and the low at either end. And notice that typically we could, for example, take the average value between the two points on either side of this and call that the data value for the third quartile. But if there's a large number like that, you might as well just grab one of the data points and call it the first, the second, and the third quartile. And typically we take the one right before the boundary. This happens to be the 250th location that then becomes quartile 1, the 500th location becomes quartile 2, the 750th location becomes quartile 3. And so it's better just to grab that value and call that the third quartile. Notice it still meets the definition of the third quartile and it follows the method 1. So notice that if I look to the left, I see 74.9% of all the data values are smaller than the one that we picked and 25% have larger values which meets our condition. And it's the same for the uh, second quartile and the first quartile. We have the same idea here, but notice typically you just pack, pick the 750th value out of 1,000 and that will then represent the third quartile. So with large data sets, strictly go for that position and that will then be the value you want to pick for either one of the first, second or third quartiles. And that is how it's done.